goodness. <laughs> This week we're in the Venice, Sarasota area. We're fishing with Mark LaMaccia. Season's changing, we're getting into the fall, the patterns are changing. We're gonna do some inshore, some offshore, you know, just kind of play it by ear and see what happens. My name is Mark LaMaccia. I was born and raised in Venice, Florida. I'm 28 years old. I've been fishing since I was at least uh, five, six years old when I first picked up a fishing rod. I used to have my dad drive me down to the Venice jetties and I'd stay there all day long until he'd come pick me up at dark. And then once I was old enough to figure things out on my own, you know, went and started buying gear and figuring the, the ropes of the inshore stuff. You know, talking with Mark, this guy had, you know, a bunch of different stuff up his sleeve, you know, a lot of different options. Um, and then they went thing from snook fishing to sheep's head fishing, possibly, you know, get offshore, get some triple tail, maybe some kingfish. So, we were just gonna kinda roll with the punches, see what was happening, play it by ear, and just take what Mother Nature would give us. All right, we're in Nokomis, Mark LaMaccia. Can I get that right? Yes, sir, you oh, got that's it. That's a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, what do you think? What do you got planned for us? I'd say we just go hit some docks and see if we can't catch some decent snook and possibly some redfish or trout. Just kinda play it by ear and just bang around yeah, town? Yeah, bang around, hit some docks, see what we got. A lot of this is like residential like this and canals yeah. and docks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, old back bay areas and stuff. Everything's all all residential. Cool. That's a neat area. We got a great time of the year coming into the fall. Weather's changing, a little north breeze. Yeah, it's beautiful. It feels different this morning. Yeah, it does. Hopefully they're chewing. Yeah, hopefully. Could spunk them up. It's kind of prefrontal weather. The wind's expected to kick up, blow out of the east, northeast, 15 to 20. Um, it really shuts down a lot of fisheries, especially on the east coast with that kind of sea breeze. But over here, at least you're protected. You know, there's a lot of places that you can fish um, and get out of the wind. So a typical pattern right here, just kind of fishing all this structure? Just hit these dogs and skip cast underneath them and just keep bouncing around. Covering water. Yep, just cover as much water as possible. They're down there, they just gotta get them to eat. Dock fishing in this area, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. It's, it really keeps your attention. You're constantly focusing on your next target, you're always hopeful that the next cast, you're gonna just, you know, get the bite that you're looking for. Yeah. Nice oh, fish. It's a decent snook. That's a good fish right there. He wasn't under the docks, he was out in the open. Just bouncing it nice and lightly off the bottom. Bro. All right. Got him? Yep. I tell you, as soon as you hooked him, he shot towards that dock. He did, man. And then you're hooking him and you're using this light tackle all around these docks and everything. They go straight for that cover. You gotta, really got to get them out right away. Got to pull them out. out. They'll horse you around. They'll put you right on, wrap you around the inside of those pylons and break you right off. Good job getting him out of there. Yep. Yeah. Get him back in. You know, it's pretty classic. Uh, dock fishing in this area. That's kind of something that I've known coming from the East Coast. Is you just get on the trolling motor, you're going to cover a lot of water, you're skipping jigs, um, you know, throwing artificials up under these docks. I was really fishing tight to the structure. Mark was kind of working out a little bit further out in the outskirts, but it's it's a lot of fun. It it really helps you hone your casting skills. But when you get it dialed in, you can cover a lot of water. You can catch a bunch of different fish. Oh, there he is. Oh, yeah, big snook. Ah. Nice. Usually you pull the opposite direction, he'll go the other way. So I'm pulling him towards the dock. He'll usually want to swim away from the dock. Oh, usually. Stay out there. Stay out there. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. No, you don't. Oh. 
That's on a this, good one. On this tackle, this 15 pounds spider wire, stealth, man. I put that Savage gear just on a jig head. That shrimp kicked it under the end of that dock and he just inhaled it. That's why I got lucky. Look, the jig's all the way out of his mouth. Yeah. That's a solid one right there. For light tackle, 15 pound braid, a 3,000 size reel. I mean, flipping under those docks, heavy structure, threw that That's Savage covered. in there and just thumped it. This is 20 pound fluoro and it's just shot right now, but I'll tell you what, it held up. Inhaled it. That's a nice solid fish. That's that a keeper fish for you guys. Absolutely. 28 to? 28 to 33 on the West Coast. 28 to 33. Season's open right now, but I say we let this one go. Absolutely. Pretty fish. All right. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Mark is just a typical dude that's just, you know, hardworking guy, you can tell, and he's just eating up with fishing just like the rest of us, you know. You get this passion, it's almost a, an escape for you. you. You work all week, and you can just tell that this guy just lives to get out there and catch some fish. My line of work out of fishing is uh, roofing. So, and, you know, construction. I've been doing construction pretty much my entire life before I, I mean, I haven't done anything else, really. So I've been roofing and it's, you know, you work so hard all week long that it just, it pays off being able to fish on the weekends and do so good. It's just a good getaway. It's like a mini vacation every week. And you kind of just got to work the fish. That's it. What do you think? I keep hearing about these sheep's head. You want to switch it up? Yeah, let's do it, man. We got a good outgoing tide and uh, let's go hit them. All right, man. Keep hearing about it. I want to do it. Oh man, I've been hearing about these sheep set all day. Talking to Markman, he's got this thing dialed in. He's got his own little technique, and he says this is a guaranteed thing. Well, we just got done scraping these pilings a little bit. It's a good way to get them all chummed up and rowdy. I mean, you can basically use any sort of bait crustacean-wise with shrimp or filler crabs, small pieces of blue crab, any, any kind of crustacean like that, they should be all over it. So we're gonna- And they're just down here mixed in. They're just mixed in between these these pylons right in between, all the way down on the bottom, just probably smelling what we just knocked off, so. Just a little split shot, drop a bait down there, real subtle bite. Real subtle bite. All right. What you got? There he is, that didn't take long. Wow. You do have the sheep's head dialed in. <laughs> How big do they gotta be? 12 inches. Yeah, Mark's got this sheep, sheep he's dialed in, uh, jailbirds as he calls them. He has a secret bait, and I think if we, we divulge that secret bait, he, things would not be good. So that's going to be one of the things that's kept secret for this, this whole episode. Yeah, they, I mean, they're a super tricky fish to catch with the small mouth that they have and the, and the quick nibbles that they give you. Oh, see, you get busted <laughs> off real quick. It's my only experience. Yeah, this is one of the best places to catch them, on the inside of these catwalks on bridges and seawalls, anywhere there's a lot of concrete structure, stuff like that. Average man fishing right here, boys. It did not take us long at all. We pulled up to this spot. He said, do this, this, this. I did exactly what he said, and it was on. Oh, there's one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got my sheep in. There you go, boy. <laughs> not a keeper, but I got a sheep in. Oh, that'll You're leave. You're right. Real subtle. Yeah, I might actually keep. Look at that mouth. I know. it. That's crazy. That's why they, when they're young, they have all those teeth, and they get older, and they lose them all because they've been chomping barnacles and everything their entire life. Really? Like grandma and grandpa? Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a doozy. That's a good one. Whoa, oh, easy now, <laughs> getting, in the, getting in the drag. That's a solid sheep's head right there. I got your rod. Look at that thing. It's crunching that hook. Oh, I just hear it, metal. Gosh. It's 
good eating. You can take the family in here, the kids, they have a great time and some great eating. Yep. They're a little tough to clean, but they're good eating, right? They are. Great white meat. Basically, because their rib cages are real big, they go all the way back to here. So really, you're basically only getting that much meat. But when you fish them like this and you catch the big ones, you only need a few. So this is the ideal rig right here? Yeah, basically all you really need is like a like a two or three aught circle hook, you know, some 20 pound, 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon leader with a little, maybe not even half ounce, a little weight. Kind of want to keep it at least a foot, foot and a half over top of the hook. That way the that bait kind of floats, sits up a little bit and the weight sits on the bottom and it kind of floats freely down that way. And you can still feel the bite. And it's about getting that down there by that structure. They're hovering around all that structure. Yep, you want to cast it close as close as you can to those pilings. You know, I like to call them jailbirds because they look like they're behind bars. So then you got to pull them out. But next thing you know, if you use anything over 25 pound fluorocarbon, they're going to see that and they're not going to want to eat it. We had a full day in, but Mark had some other plans in store for us. He wanted to do some dock life fishing. And rather than getting off the water and getting back on, we said, you know what? He had a restaurant on the water. Let's pull up there. As the sun was going down, let's let the snook, you know, get settled in on the dock lights, grab a bite to eat get back out and see if we can catch a snook on the fly. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Ray Marine. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. I kind of grown up doing dock light fishing, real popular in a lot of places where there's a lot of snook. Um, and it's a great way to target these, these fish. They're, they highly orient themselves to these docks. It's, it's real visual. It's a great presentation for fly. It's a lot of fun. It keeps you interacted because you see the fish. All right, had a nice little dinner. Mix it up now, dock lights. This is near and dear to my heart. There he is. Nice. <gasps> Oh, That's a better oh. fish, too. Oh, get him out of there. You don't even have time to get him on the reel doing <laughs> stuff like this. You just strip him in. Oh, don't get any better than that on that eight weight. You can see that one that you're going to catch. Nice little snook. Good job, man. Thanks, brother. Thanks for making it happen. Absolutely. These dock lights are pretty incredible. Um, a lot of these people in these residential areas actually put these lights out to attract fish. And these lights, you know, shining down the water, the small, you know, bait fish get into those lights. They actually feel safer in those lights than they do out in the darkness. And the snook just, you know, uh, you know, congregate around these same lights. You, not only snook, you get trout, ladyfish, small tarpon. It's its own little ecosystem. Got him? Yep. That didn't take you long. That's so cool. Uh, I hear a porpoise back there. You got a lot of problems with those around here? Yeah, you want to try to at least, you don't want to try to horse the fish in, but try and get it away that way he doesn't, he doesn't get eaten by that old pesky blow shark. That's a decent snook right there. It's basically the size of this, these ones around the, the lights. They do get a little bit bigger than that if you let it sink down a little more, but that's about basically all you're going to get around here. Day one, we were pretty much, you know, stuck in shore because of the wind. Um, Mark had some different plans though for day two. The wind was a little bit lighter, blown straight offshore. It afforded us the ability to get out there, to look around, and hopefully either get a kingfish or a triple tail. All right, day two. Day two, man, we got a nice, beautiful morning. We got an offshore wind. Run these crab traps and see if we can't pick up a couple of kingfish, maybe some triple tail once that sun gets up a little higher. Going out of Venice Inlet? Out of Venice Inlet, yeah. We had an awesome day yesterday, just a lot of fun. Just One good thing about this time of year is uh, the triple tail. In the fall, they come in, and um, that's when stone crab season opens, and all the crabbers go and set all their traps. As the water cools down, and the more and more traps that they pull out, the more of those triple tail come in, and they come and they sit on the bottom of those buoys. So you fish pretty close to the beach for these? Yeah, anywhere from you know the first set of crab traps out to uh, maybe 40 feet at the most. I mean, you kind of just zigzag back and forth through the crab trap lines and see where you're going to get your bite at. 
once you get your bite, see what depth you're in and then run that depth. And usually you can pick up quite a few fish. Well, nice little morning here blowing east, so it'll be calm closer to the shore. Further off you get in the gulf, it's gonna get a little sporty, but. We could have some good luck. Like I said, if you just zigzag and hit 10 feet out and then come back in another 10 feet and then see what, what column you're getting your bite in and then just run that depth. So on the west coast, out on the, the beaches, you know, up to a couple miles offshore, there are just, it's littered with hundreds of stone crab pots. It's stone crab season. These crabbers get out here and set their pots and it's just a little floating oasis. These triple tail love structure and what better structure than a little crab pot that they can sit under all day long. Just getting some stuff out, you know, they eat just about anything. It's kind of yeah, small and suspending. Small and just sinks a little bit. And uh, you know, if, they, if you spook them, they'll just run down the trap and you just give them a couple minutes and they usually come right back up to the buoy and you can always get a second shot at them. <laughs> on the savage gear. <laughs> Those are cool fish. How big do they have to be? 15 inches. That's too small, but they are fun to catch and they are excellent eating. Look at that. First one we found on a pot, man. Just threw that savage gear to him. You notice that triple tail, they got one, two, and three. They're neat fish. Aggressive. Aggressive. When they get bigger, they just tug like crazy. How cool is that? I'll Good job, man. Go. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. Triple tail love, you know, small bait fish, crustaceans. So it's a great opportunity that you can either, you know, throw artificials, um, throw a fly at them, or even throw live bait. So it doesn't, you know, they eat a, a, a quite a bit of different things. It really depends on the size of the triple tail that you have to scale your tackle back to. Yeah, he's on the right side of the buoy. Perfect. He's on it. Nice! <laughs> awesome! I just dropped that fly in there. <laughs> He oh, how cool it. is that? He's not very big, man, but wow, how aggressive. Going. Look at that. What a fun fish. Come out here and light tackle, a fly rod in your hand. And these things get big. These are small, season's just kind of getting going for them, but nice. The little guy. Good job, man. It has not taken us long. We've been out here for, God, fishing for 15 minutes and, and got two already. Oh, that's going to be it right there. Ah, that was it. What a cool take. God, I could spend all day doing this. Out last night on dock lights, sight fishing, catching them, the snook on fly, then out today, catching triple tail on fly. Woo. What a place. Yeah, that was excellent. Kind of that same size we've been catching. That little brown fly, little clouser there. Could not resist. God, that was Like awesome. armor, man. These things are bad to the bone. Not hard to see why they call them a triple tail. And they use all that to, to kick and get away. They're good little fighters. Well, they gotta be 15 inches, so this one's a little short. Let's let them get back in the water. Absolutely. We worked several miles of these pots and we saw a bunch of fish. But we're talking with Mark, he said, we're kind of early in the triple tail season. They're not seeing a lot of the big ones yet, and, and that was the case today. We had some great opportunities, caught some decent ones, but the front was approaching, the wind was picking it up. We decided to call it a day. Man, the weekend of fishing was really good. You know, we got some great snook, we got quite a few triple tail, a couple on fly. You know, we hit the snook lights real good, and, and fishing, with, uh, fishing with George Gotts is a great time. He's, you know, he's just good, good all around people. You know, you can work all week long and deal with all the BS and all that stuff, but then you have those two days out of the week that you could just get get rid of everything and just get your gear and go and fish. Being able to have those two days to go fish is just so much more rewarding. It was a refreshing experience. It was like getting out with one of your buddies on the weekend, just a normal dude. 
that truly has a passion for fishing. You know, and, and you could just tell that this guy spent a lot of time on the water, learned it all himself, and it was a pleasure sharing the time out on the water in this Venice, Sarasota area. Split shot. Nah! <laughs> and then the blood starts. Turn the handle, Randall. <laughs> Low and wide, baby. Low and wide. The only bite I got was from a motor guide. <laughs> but it was a solid bite. I mean, solid. Really whaled it. Oh, dude, he hit it. I set up on him. 36 volts of power. <laughs> yeah, top water, yeah, Zuri. Most motor guides, I mean, that's probably one of the preferred baits. 